episode of The Dose, we will explore the various health concerns of the spine and other key areas of the body. Nagging back pain won't go away? Well, we ask this question and more to our featured medical expert with Sports and Spine Institute of McDonough. Hi everyone, welcome to SCB TV The Dose, presented by Sweet Spot Smiles, and I'm so excited to have you on this journey to learn more about the health services in our community, right in our backyard. And we're opening up right now with the one and only Dr. Patel. He is with Sports and Spine Institute of McDonough. So excited to have you on the very first episode of The Dose. And what an amazing and fascinating area of medicine you're in, right? So explain what you do exactly. Um, so I'm a physiatrist, so I kind of look at ourselves as the primary care of sports medicine. Okay. You know, the field really stemmed from after World War II. Uh, a lot of people were coming back, had brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, uh, amputations, and so a group of uh, primary care doctors actually created a whole hospital for it. And oh, wow. it kind of just snowballed from there. Um, so we started stemming into doing more of the musculoskeletal medicine okay. stuff, which is basically kind of any joint, hip, knee, shoulder, back issues. Um, so we kind of evolved into that, um, became what I like to consider the specialist in yes. sports medicine and spine care that's non-surgical. I see. So I've met individuals out and about who mm -hmm. say, well, you know, I had things under my back or had procedures 20 years sure. ago. Sometimes it didn't necessarily get better, but what I'm so fascinated about is that you shared previously that it's really been a lot of innovation in your area of medicine in the last 10 years. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so besides MRIs and everything else to help yes. us with the diagnosis, I would say the biggest thing in physiatry is getting an accurate diagnosis. Okay. Right? And so a lot of the diagnosis comes from just taking a great history and doing a great physical exam, and that leads you to getting the MRI. Unfortunately, now in medicine, we kind of jump the physical exam part, okay. go straight to the MRI, and then try to correlate that with symptoms. So that's a great part about what my field has kind of evolved in, is that we do a lot of great physical exam, Look at the MRI and say, okay, that matches. Yes. And so now with the procedures that we can do, we can do spinal epidurals, we can uh -huh. do um, facet injections. There's even something called radiofrequency ablation. But again, it all stems on the accurate diagnosis and make sure that those symptoms correlate with the MRI. And with the invention of fluoroscopy, which is what we kind of use to guide injections, it makes that even more accurate uh -huh. as well. Amazing. Yeah. So right now we have a demonstration of the knee. Explain how this works with exercise. Yeah, so your, you know, your knee joint kind of moves like a hinge. It does a little bit of sliding, but problem is, your knee takes a lot of brunt and punishment, okay. especially for those that like to run and yes. work out and kind of put a lot of pressure on their legs or stand all day. So what tends to happen is over time you get wearing of not only your meniscus, but the cartilage here that lines the knee. And so those spaces get a little bit closer and that's what we look for on x-rays. So when we see knee arthritis, we know that there's two things that can help a lot with knee arthritis. Okay. Well, two major things that help yes. a lot with arthritis. One is how strong the quadricep muscles are. So you have four muscles that kind of attach to the front of the knee and they actually help stabilize your knee. So the stronger okay. your quads are, we know from all the studies that that's what slows down the progression of knee arthritis. The other thing is weight loss. Well, we talked about okay. obesity. It's an epidemic in the United States. For every pound of weight you lose, you lose four pounds per square centimeter of force to the knee. So it's oh, wow. exponential how much pressure you can take off your knee just by doing that. So strengthening plus weight loss huge in knee arthritis. Now for someone watching us right now mm -hmm. in Stockbridge, Georgia, and they're saying, but I have this nagging pain that won't sure. go away, but my next door neighbor, they said they had treatment and it wasn't necessarily effective. But what I'm so amazed by is that it's actually customized, personalized medicine now, right? Yeah, absolutely, so that, and again, that boils down to getting seen, getting examined, and actually figuring out what the problem is. Okay. But also going through the steps to help people all absolutely learn how to manage themselves, right? So pain is very subjective. Pain yes, is something is. that we all interpret yes. based on what we feel. We all Absolutely. have the same kind of fibers, but our interpretation of pain is what's different. So some people, that little na nagging backache Absolutely. is just, that's what it is. Okay. For some people, it interrupts their entire life. Oh, you know, wow. It interrupts their function. And so that's kind of where we fall into places that we can help them regain function. And that's kind of what our field stems on. It's not so much, how long you live okay. is making that quality of life and optimizing that for as long as you Well, right now I know you're holding a model of the spine. Correct. So this is amazing. This is what it looks like actually in our body. Uh, to some degree, obviously there's a lot more blood vessels and that kind of stuff and muscles that attach, but you know, your spine um, is one of the biggest things, a support system for your entire neurological system okay. outside your brain. So all the signals run through there. So wow. what happens when people get nerve pain? Yes. Sometimes it's a pinched nerve. Sometimes you have arthritis in the joints in the back part. And sometimes it's just wear and tear on your disc that causes okay. this to get closer and that can cause pressure on the nerves. 
So again, there's simple things that can be done for that. There's procedures where you can do epidurals, and there's different types of epidurals where you can actually inject into the spinal canal, and you're okay. basically putting a steroid into your spinal canal to try to calm down the irritation to the nerve. Yes. You can also go right around the nerve to help calm the irritation directly to a specific nerve if you have an idea of where that nerve's coming from. And again, okay. that stems from your physical exam and MRI. And the people that have that typical low back pain when they're standing for a long period of time, doesn't Absolutely. really travel down the legs, and it's usually kind of at or above the belt line, okay. can often come from the arthritis in these joints. And so again, you can kind of do either injections into those joints. You can sometimes block the nerve that goes to that joint to kind of see if that helps with pain. Yes. And if it does, then you can even burn those little nerves to those joints that can sometimes give you anywhere from six months up to two years of relief of wow. just pain in the back itself. Wow. Now, one of the major contributors to back pain is Nicotine. So okay. smoking actually increases the risk of disc degeneration and arthritis in the spine. Wow. So that's one of the things that we counsel patients on a lot that are smokers that have chronic back pain is if you actually stop smoking, nicotine will slow down the progression of your arthritis, but also it works in your brain and it makes you more sensitive to the pain. So smoking cessation can actually reduce pain levels. Wow. Yeah. So great information. I have Absolutely. to ask this. I know you certainly want us to be aware of wellness and obesity. Yep. Does obesity or extra excess weight impact the spine? Absolutely. So the more abdominal weight you have, the more it's going to pull in the front part of your spine, the more stress that goes through your spine. So sitting actually puts more pressure through your discs, but standing and obesity will put more pressure through the spine itself and especially these joints in the back. So wow. Core strength and weight loss, especially abdominal weight, can take a lot of pressure off your spine. So we've got to get patients involved in their own health care. And that's kind of what we focus on. You know, I like to think of ourselves as a musculoskeletal cheerleaders okay. as well. I'm really an advocate for patients who are overweight. I talk to them about the diets I do, the exercises awesome. I do. You know, and, th and that's a big part of it, right? A lot of people okay. say, oh, well, I can't exercise because my knee hurts or my back's keeping me. Well, there's other ways to exercise besides running on a treadmill, walking, exactly. simple exercises, even breaking them into smaller segments of exercise so that you can still maintain that whole 30 minutes of exercise that they recommend a day without doing it all at one time. So, Which is so important, right? And I Absolutely. love that you are empowering us to do the very best that we can Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Now, I know you all see so many different types of patients here. Explain what sort of ailments your patients may come in with. Um, so most of the things that we see are spine related, um, and okay. that's just kind of what gets referred to us. but. You know, I'm a specialist in sports medicine, so we take care of anyone with hip, knee, shoulder, ankle, wrist, hand pain. Wow. Um, you know, if you're a sports-related injury, uh, I've trained in concussions, so I know I how see. to do concussion care. Um, you know, we cover sports events as well, so we're kind of that, again, that holistic, all-encompassing yes. musculoskeletal medicine, and even some neurological disorders. You know, there's patients that we see that have ALS, spinal cord okay. injuries, traumatic brain injuries. No, that's not my subspecialty. Yes. Our field does take care of that. We are trained in that, so we can always give input for that as well. Before you leave us, Dr. Patel, sure. I have to ask this. Mm -hmm. For someone that's saying, you know what, I hear what you're saying, I probably do need the health services, <laughs> uh, certainly that you're offering and Absolutely. explaining and educating us about right now, but they're saying, I don't want to see one other a physician, I don't want to sure. have a prescription of medicine, because you know, emotionally speaking, it can make someone think, but am I really that sick long term? Sure. Speak to that human component of individuals needing help. Well, you know, when people need help, the biggest thing is they've got to ask for help yes. and they've got to want to, they want to have to get the help. And so the big key that we try to do is tell people, look, it's not always about a medication. It's not always about seeing another doctor. It's okay. about seeing hopefully the right doctor yes. and hopefully getting on a regimen where you can manage your symptoms without having to come back every week, every okay. month, every two months, every three months. And that's kind of our goal is to give you all the tools that you need so you can manage this for the rest of your life. I love it. The yeah. goal is wellness. Stay with us. You're watching The Dose. In the upcoming segment, we spotlight hypertension, diet, and exercise with Eagles Landing Family Practice. Ready to reach your goals of wellness? Join us for critical information.